So it's my pleasure to present Ben Mov. Ben is an investigator of the Elite College of Dublin. Há muito que se interessa pelo ensino da matemática e informática e está entusiasmado especialmente com o facto de as pessoas poderem criar um implemento o seu software, a sua tecnologia e não apenas serem consumidores da tecnologia de outros. Tenho mostrado em matemática, doutoramento em engenharia, anos pela Universidade de Oxford, se não sei o E agora, neste momento, vai falar sobre o PyGGB, Learning Python with GeoGebra que é um sistema online e gratuito que integra a linguagem Python com o um sistema de geografia interativa ou GeoGebra. Como eu já já explicar. Thank you for accepting this invitation. And Thank you. Well, um, I'm sorry, I am going to speak in English. So, um, I'm sorry, I can't follow that. But, um, yeah, thank you very much, Paula. Thank you very much, Luish, for having me here. Um, and as I assume, Paolo just said, um, I'm here to talk about some work I've been doing with some colleagues in the GeoGebra organization. So my uh, colleagues Mike and Florian and Zoltan and myself, um, we've been working on this system and its supporting resources. Uh, and the idea is that we want to help people learn Python coding. This workshop now, um, I'm going to talk for only a, a short time. Um, and then everybody will use the system and try it out and hopefully that will give you some ideas about what it might, what it can do. So, um, I expect this is familiar to a lot of you from conversations I've had, but uh, just to summarise anyway, so what is GeoGebra? Um, it is some dynamic mathematics software and it comes with a vast collection of resources. It's uh, very popular, lots of people all around the world have um, created resources for it and made them freely available. It covers a range of systems, um, geometry, algebra, uh, computer algebra, it's making uh, progress into proof systems as well. Um, what we're going to look at um, today in this workshop is the online geometry tool that it has. So this is what, um, and we'll look now at what um, that looks like. So we're starting this talk with, just as I say, a summary of GeoGebra, um, and it's wide use in education and research, and we're looking at its 2D geometry system we're looking at now. So I, I think probably most of you are, are familiar with this, but this is a very nice, I like this demonstration of GeoGebra, so I, I'm including it anyway. So here's a, a theorem in geometry, which um, you can see the little animation there uh, is demonstrating it. So if you have uh, two conics, one, so ellipses, let's say, one inside the other, and if you can draw a triangle, let's say, that touches the outside ellipse um, at its point and is tangent to the inside ellipse, then there's an infinite family of those polygons. So if you can draw one, you can draw a whole family, is the, is the idea there. So, I'm just going to have um, a look at that now in GeoGebra. Hopefully, hopefully, this is coming across to the uh, screen share. So, I'm going to, have to crick my neck a little bit here to see what's going on. Um, so, here's I've set this up with two um, ellipses here. Yeah. Uh, sorry, find my pointer now. There we go. I'm sorry. Looking sideways at the big screen. Right, so we'll take it from here. Uh, so, just to show how this works. I expect you'll be familiar with this. So what I'm going to do is see if I can construct a polygon of the required sort. So if I put a point on the outside ellipse there, then I want to construct a tangent that goes through that point and is tangent to the inner ellipse. And of course there's two of them, that makes sense. So I'm actually going to hide uh, the second one so we can concentrate on trying to trace that polygon around and see if it matches up. Um, in, into a polygon rather than just a collection of lines. So uh, the next job then is to find that other point of intersection. So the other point of intersection of this tangent and the outside conic is here. Um, that makes sense. And then I need to do the next bounce along. So take the tangent between this point and the 
inner ellipse, here it is. Um, just repeat now, really. So if I intersect that, uh, that line and the outside conic, I get the new point. Um, I'm, I'm nearly there, I promise. So we take the point and find its tangents with the inner ellipse. There they are. Um, we find that point by intersecting this line and that. Ellipse, and then finally we can find uh, the tangent between there and there. And as perhaps it won't surprise you, I chose these ellipses so that it does in fact join up and make a, a conic. Um, sorry, make a closed polygon. Um, and then what that theorem tells us is that if I kind of drag this point around, then it, it always matches up. It doesn't doesn't matter where I start. We always get this um, this family of, of four-sided, in this case, polygons with that property. So um, maybe that's, that's fairly familiar to people who've used GeoGebra before, but I think it's very nice I just wanted to put it in. So, so that's GeoGebra. Um, that's uh, the, a tool that a lot of people are um, familiar with. If they're familiar with it uh, at, at school, if they're school students, um, they'd be familiar with it through research as well, perhaps. So that's the GeoGebra half of IGGB. Um, so then, the other half is Python. So, what is Python? It's a, a very popular general purpose programming language. Um, by some surveys, it's the most used programming language in the world, although I suspect it, it depends a little bit who you ask. Um, but it's, it's certainly very popular. It's um, in the real world, in industry, it's heavily used in education. In Ireland, uh, where I work, it is one of two languages that uh, students learn at school if they do computer science, the other one being JavaScript, but most people use Python. Most teachers choose to teach through Python, I should say. Um, the, the Python advertises itself as being batteries included, so it comes with a large set of standard libraries um, that let you do useful things with it straight away. And it, it's quite beginner friendly uh, as these things go. It's not C or C++. You, you can get started with some quite short programs and start learning about about coding um, using Python. So here's what uh, what Python looks like. This is the sort of thing one might do at secondary school if you're a, a student of 16 years old, for example. So you might write a program that prints out some times tables. This is um, Thony, which is an IDE that's often used in educational uh, settings with us, and I think uh, around the world as well. Um, and this is this is very different to um, to GeoGebra, where you point and click and, and draw nice things. So some of this might not be familiar to students. So um, there was an idea, which, which I didn't have, but I'll tell you where the idea came from. But would it, would it be good if we could glue those two things together? So use GeoGebra that students are familiar with in many countries as a way to help start teaching Python. So the motivation came from uh, Scandinavian maths teachers, I think Norway, because I could, might have a details slightly wrong, sorry, um, where GeoGebra is heavily used in maths in schools, and teachers there approached GeoGebra saying, it would be great if we could use GeoGebra to teach Python, so that, that's where this Python GeoGebra project um, came from. So this is what we'll, you'll, you'll individually see in a minute, but this is what it looks like. So you have um, on the right, there. Sorry, I don't know if people following on screen can see me pointing, but on the right there is a GeoGebra construction, and on the left is a Python program. And when that Python program runs, it generates the, the uh, pattern, the picture on the right, and this lets people get an introduction to the ideas of Python. So uh, loops, just the syntax of Python, its indentation. So a way to learn Python in an environment that um, they're familiar with. So they will they know about points and lines and circles in GeoGebra, and so here's a way to let them build on that knowledge to start learning about Python. And we'll see more shortly when I finish talking, which won't be long. Um, so we've tried to um, make the system easy to use in the classroom. So there are practical difficulties with some systems. Um, sometimes schools have 
rules or policies that mean it's difficult to install software onto computers. So for this, there's nothing to install, it just runs in the browser. Um, you can save your PyGGB programs as links, uh, just URLs, they're quite long URLs, but they're just URLs, and so, for instance, a teacher can put a link in Google Classroom or something like that, so their students can see the work. Um, a, a starting example, perhaps, that the students should extend, uh, and then the other way around, the students can submit their work through sending in a link, so uh, that's addressing some practical problems that sometimes show up when teaching computer science. Um, you can embed these links into GeoGebra books. GeoGebra, the existing GeoGebra system, the main GeoGebra system, has this idea of a book that lets you put together resources and chapters and you can embed IGGB into those books. And I'll, I'll put the examples that we do in these workshops into a book and send that around afterwards. Um, and particularly the motivation from the Scandinavian maths teachers to use GeoGebra to help introduce Python, I think is, I think that's a very powerful idea. I think maths and computer science go very well together. They reinforce each other. The idea of computational thinking, the idea that a lot of maths is about, sorry, as you know since I'm in a maths department, but a lot of maths is about finding abstractions, finding uh, common features of different systems, um, the idea of functions, the idea of recursion, all of these things show up in maths and in computer science, so I think it's a very natural thing to do to try and put them together. Um, and the idea of teaching people how to be precise when they say things, I think that's another good link between maths and computer science. So when you're writing Python program, you need to get it exactly right, um, and if you're writing a mathematical proof, you need to get it exactly right. So this kind of precision of expression, I think, is a nice common feature between maths um, and computer science as well. So I think, it, yeah, I think um, it's a great project. I'm lucky to have been involved with it, um, and yeah, we've, we've had fun. So this is uh, an exploratory extension to PyGGB that we've played with a little bit, which is physical computing. So for a lot of people, uh, a lot of students, seeing writing a program that has some real-world effect is quite motivating. So if a light lights up or a robot drives or you can press big buttons and things happen, um, but that's a good tool for engagement. Um, so we've done some experiments with putting things like these into IGGB, so this can run through the browser, so joysticks or game pads. The thing at the bottom that looks at, I don't know quite what it looks like, it's a, a temperature probe so you can measure temperatures and draw graphs um, through PyGGB. The, the circular thing is, it's about that big in real life, maybe five centimeters across, maybe a bit less. That is a circuit playground express, it has lots of little lights and switches and a tilt sensor and I think temperature sensor so you can maybe connect that up to your system and, and yeah. Think of creative ways to bring the physical world into your programs. Um, and that would let us do things like this. So this is uh, a graph on the right that I made by running this program and then moving the joystick around and it, as you can see, it plots the uh, so time is on the x-axis and on the vertical axis is um, the relative position of uh, one of the joystick axes. So you can do, you can do things like that and learn about um, Python through that way. Um, so, what have we done so far? We've had um, interest from uh, different people, which has been very gratifying. Uh, so, uh, Zoltan, one of the authors of the paper that led to me being here, uh, he has trained educators and used PyGGB directly with students. Um, Florian has written a master's thesis which demonstrates how PG PyGGB can be used to teach quite a lot of the maths curriculum in Austria, um, and he's done and been coding classes with secondary age students. And we've got, yeah, it's been there's been some interest from people around the world, in, including here, of course. So thank you, thank you very much again for having me. Um, and we're over the past couple of days, we've made good progress for integrating PyGGB into the uh, Siakwa system that um, is, has been built here.
Mero. So yeah, it's uh, it's been yeah pretty nice to build something and see that people find it useful. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me over. So at this point, I'm going to mostly stop talking in terms of the presentation part. And what I hope we can do next is I see lots of laptops, so that's good. So there's um, a URL on the screen there, so georgiabra.org slash python. Um, so I'll give you a moment to go to that URL and I will do the same. And then we'll write some programs together and uh, change them and see what ideas we can have to make some, yeah, make some nice Python programs that make some pretty pictures. So uh, we'll do that now. I'll give you a moment to go to that URL and I'll do the same. Okay, thanks.